I think I might be on to something. Looking at lowering the insulin resistance is a huge factor when we're dealing with weight gain. It should be converted to insulin sensitivity and that's when we actually start burning the fat instead of just burning sugar. So I've been reading a lot and looking at lectures from different doctors from both sides of the spectrum when it comes to how we approach our diet. It's really returning back to those basics, changing the type of macros and the amount that we're actually eating. So it goes back to macros again, right? I don't want to count calories, but what I do want to do is to track myself for a couple of weeks and see where it is. And then, you know, we can just roll with it. <laughs> Insulin resistance is all about the sugar. And so when I have too many carbs and we don't think about it in the way of sugar, People don't understand that, you know, including myself, don't understand or did not understand that carbs is really sugar too. It can convert to sugar. So certain carbs that I'm sensitive to, you may not be sensitive to. So it may not even work for you, but this is something that I'm just sharing about how it is uh, affecting me and my body since going into menopause. And the things that I was doing on my plant-based diet last year, I really can't even do it this year. And, and I, I've mentioned this before. Protein is very, very important for us women. And so we have to up it. And I don't wanna up it, <laughs> my protein, with a lot of synthetic types of protein, like a lot of protein powders. I think smoothies have a great place but I don't really think I want to drink smoothies every day just so I can get my protein up, if that makes sense. I really would like to get more protein just in my diet naturally from whole foods. What I know about fasting is that eating a lower carb type of diet, whatever that looks like, will benefit you more while you're fasting in a longer mode. So like, Right now, okay, I got off my 42 hour fast and I felt so much better when I had upped my protein and lowered the carbs. So if that's something that resonates with you, please, please keep watching. The other component of this is my sleep. I was really not getting enough sleep. So I was about six and a half, seven hours. I know that's borderline for anyone that it may not be enough sleep, but even if it's that level of hours, say seven hours, then is it quality sleep? That is what I'm asking. And the quality sleep, meaning are you dreaming? Are you feeling like you wake up with more energy or you wake up feeling rested? It's not feeling like you've been through a battle a war because you've been having nightmares or you've been interrupted in your sleep by the cat like I do on <laughs> I don't know sometimes the cat wants to play or do something in the middle of the night but when she doesn't do that I can sleep very good but what I was focusing on is the insulin resistance and that's where this stubborn visceral fat and fat around your waist fat around your thighs and your behind, all that, and weird pockets that it's showing up in. I mean, like I felt like I had a pocket like behind my knee. I'm like, what is this? What is this? Not only is the workouts good, I'm doing HIIT exercises and strength training. And so I'm doing about an average now, about five days a week. It just depends, I switch it off. You should have a day of rest every couple of days. I kind of take it like every two to three days, have a day of rest. Every two to three days, have a day of rest, right? And that seems to really help. You certainly need to rest after your strength training if you're doing a serious weightlifting type of class. But what I've noticed in my blood work, as I mentioned in past videos, is that my A1C has gone up tremendously and it really was alarming for me and put me in the pre-diabetic 
range. So bringing down those starches and the carbs is what I had to do. I think before I had the change from perimenopausal into menopause, I think it was fine when I was high carb then. Right now, no. I've talked to numerous holistic doctors as well as my primary, and uh, you know they all agree that I do need to lower my carbs in my case and then we will see in the next three to six months what the blood work looks like. I'm just gonna give this a shot and then I'll report back on how I'm doing. But one thing I will say about upping the protein, my stomach is starting to come down and flatten out better. It's about ultimate self-care and you have to be selfish to take care of you because if you don't, then who's gonna take care of you when you're sick? So let's stop being sick and feeling like that, you know, no one's gonna come and rescue us. We have to be our own health advocate. All right, I'm getting off my soapbox. I'm on my way back to the sauna. I go twice a week right now, and it really feels good. It helps again with that sleep. It helps with bringing down the inflammation, which is connected to the insulin resistance, right? And, uh, you know, just sweating it out. It's about sweating, guys. So if you can sweat more on a regular, it is going to make a difference with that weight and dropping down the insulin resistance so it can get out and your liver can process better and also uh, process those fat cells and shrink them down. One thing I wanna mention about breaking the fast, I broke it with avocado some cucumbers and some tomatoes and a little bit like a teaspoon of olive oil with this, a little salt and a little pepper i have to say that was the most amazing <laughs> snack not a quite a meal but a snack to break the fast but also not feel overwhelmed and i would tell you it is right on the money so that's not what I would do every time for a long fast, but this is the way I'm breaking it right now is um, looking at some good fats and then some good protein as well. And of course, in the next hour, you know, I ate a regular meal, which was low carb. So I had some fish and uh, more uh, greens to make sure I'm getting my veggies in, get that plants in my system but also balancing it out with a little bit more fat of uh, more avocado. I feel so much better. There was no gas, no um, bloating. Now in the rest of the week, uh, continue intermittent fasting around the 18 to 20 hour mark um, daily, usually in the weekdays, but on the weekends, change it up and eat regular in the day and not have, a, I have a no fast day every week so I will eat a breakfast in the morning uh, just whenever I feel hungry so it's just about being mindful of when you feel hungry but again shifting those carbs and lowering them and uh, you know that's okay I, I think it's working for me uh, I love to hear about what's working for you and your diet did you change anything did you adjust anything in your macros and seeing if you are responding better. And I look forward to speaking to you on the next episode. And always remember, you can begin again. And you know what? There's no rules, it's just about taking care of you. Thanks guys for watching. I look forward to seeing you on the next video. We'll talk to you soon. Cheers.